Well, welcome everyone. Hello, hello. We are ready to start. Uh, and I just got the recording going. So I know most people are going to be watching via the replay here, but let me make sure I've got all of our settings. I should have done this before I started the recording. <laughs> To make sure we've got everybody muted here so we don't have disruptions. Okay, um, I'm Tanya. Uh, I know I know a lot of you are friends of mine, but I see a lot of names I don't know coming into the group and wanting to be a part of this. I know some of you have shared this out with friends. The more the merrier. I think that's awesome. But my name is Tanya Cottrell. I live in Salem, Oregon, and I just had this harebrained idea. Uh, to invite people to join in with me as I convert my house into the house that cleans itself based on this book. And I want to do this in the month of August. Um, and so I put it out there on Thursday thinking, eh, maybe, maybe I'll get five people, 10 people, 15 people to do this with me. That'll be fun because I work better with groups and leading groups through things. And we have I don't know, the last I checked, over 120 people that have joined in three days. So <laughs> I guess I'm not alone. A lot of people are feeling the need to do some revamping in their house. So welcome to the group, whether you're on live or on the replay, it is pretty exciting. So I wanna give you a little backstory on what this is, why I'm doing it now, what's in it or like why it's beneficial, I think, for you to do it. I don't get anything out of it. I'm obviously not selling anything or, or anything like that. What I'm getting out of it is camaraderie and inspiration and accountability because um, when I'm doing something with a group, I tend to stick with the process. And so I love that. So I actually did this system in my whole house back in 2010. I bought this book on a whim. I saw it in a bookstore, it was on sale. I grabbed it, I bought it, I started reading it and I went, oh, this is different than any other kind of home organizing book or or, or video or anything I've seen. This is a different approach and it, it made so much sense to me. It made so much sense to me um, because I am just a little bit scattered. I'll just be honest. I, I'm an achiever. I do a lot in my world, in my life. I'm always busy. I have a million projects going on. Um, I I tend to just be busy, busy, busy. I'm a creative person. What I don't like to do is routine things and, and just like the same thing over and over again. So cleaning, I do it because I have to, but it's drudgery to me. And uh, as much as I love being in a clean space, in an organized space, in a minimalist space, it really helps me to think and feel peaceful. And I think it helps my family. The like routine discipline of it was a struggle. And I was frustrated with clutter. And so I just started implementing this system. And I am telling you, it is the one thing that has worked and stuck really well in my life. Why? Because it was written by a woman, her name is Mindy Starnes Clark, who is also a person who is busy with a lot of things and doesn't really particularly enjoy just doing routine discipline cleaning habits every day. And I realized I think a little bit differently than some people and that's what she was saying. She thinks a little bit differently than um, some who are maybe naturally gifted at that, naturally gifted at just being a tidy person. I like being tidy, but it, it comes unraveled a little bit, you know? And with a busy household, it was a frustration. So that was when I was living in Montana. I revamped my whole house. I invited some friends to do it as well. We didn't have all this technology to get on Zoom or that kind of thing, or even Facebook groups, but I had several people um, say, I want to do it too. And what I saw was it worked for me and it worked for others as well. And not everyone stuck with it and did, and did it, but a few of them really did. And they loved it. They loved it. And so I've always believed in it. I saw that it's, it stuck really well. It helped our family to learn how to do quick cleanup in a way that didn't feel like drudgery. And we were able to upkeep it in a way that really brought order into our home. Uh, but we moved we moved out to Oregon seven years ago. I have never set my house up with this system since moving, and I've been wanting to for a while. It's been in the back of my mind, and this summer I just went, you know what, August is my month. August is my month. I don't know that I'll get my whole house done, but I'm going to start and make a dent in it, and I'm going to start the process. And so that's why we're here today. 
I want to invite you into, I just decided I'm going to do a five week push. I'm calling it the house that cleans itself five week challenge. So welcome to the five week challenge. Um, I am anticipating that it's, I'm going to be doing this process for more than five weeks, but I want to do a big five week push to get some traction in some priority areas in my home. And once you get into the process, you're going to find that you are inspired and motivated to keep going because the system is very doable and you can just do it a little bit at a time. And the progress that you make is so, it's so fun and it's freeing and it's exciting. So this is not a home organizing system. We are going to talk about organizing. We are going to do organizing, but it's, it's different than just organizing. It, I want you to scrap the word organizing and replace it with the word engineering. We're going to engineer our home to tend to stay cleaner with a little bit less effort. Okay. So there were so many tips I picked up as I did this through my house. Now you're going to get some flexibility to create solutions in your spaces that work for you and work for the behavior that your family has or the desires you have. So you do not have to apply these examples, but I'm going to tell you about just a couple things that just small things, small changes that really made a big impact. This is just a tiny sampling. So for example, when I did this in 2010, my kids were elementary school down to infant. Okay. We lived right behind our elementary school. And so my girls were fortunate to live right behind the playground. So they walked, you know, safely and they would come in the front door of our house with their backpacks. Well, we had a mud room off the garage. And of course, when we moved in, I thought mud room, we have the backpack hooks and we have the lockers and all this stuff, but it didn't make sense for the behavior of my family because my kids didn't come in and out from school through the garage and the mud room. They came in and out through the front door. In the front door, I had a coat closet that was just a doorknob opening um, closet and had a bunch of stuff in there, the vacuum cleaners and folding chairs and coats. And after re reading this book and going through the process, I you're going to learn this. You do a little what's called detective work and you analyze the behavior of your household in certain spaces. And then you make changes that match the behavior so that you're less having to constantly change your behavior and your family's behavior and nag them to put something where it goes all of the time. Take your shoes from the front or two way, take them to your room, take them to your room. No, instead we're gonna work with that behavior and we're gonna create a way to conceal the clutter and the mess in a way that just happens sort of automatically, right? So what I did is I ended up with a just a tub, like a clear um, tote tub, like a Rubbermaid tub. I ditched the lid. I put it right in that coat closet. So you can close the door, you don't see it. And it was the backpack tub. So when they came in, it was a dump instead of a, a hang on a hook. Now, I do love hooks for certain things. Um, hooks are great. I like to get things up off the surfaces, but for certain behaviors, they're not right for certain people. And having my kids come in the front door, walk to the mudroom and hang their backpacks up wasn't going to work. And my entry didn't have a space for hooks for backpacks. There was no, it would be too intrusive. And I didn't really want to see backpacks hanging in my entryway. And so I learned to change the, from the, um, the line of sight, when you came in the room, you'll learn about this in the book, you want to be concealed. So it went in the closet, but it was so simple to just have one tub and their backpacks just slid in. And because there was no lid, they were neat and tidy in there. And it happened automatically with their behavior. And I no longer had backpacks dumped on my floor. So that's just one small example. Another thing that we did is we boarded up the bottoms of their of their beds so nothing could go under. And it was such a simple step and it looked great. And it was like a hotel where nothing goes under the bed. And it saved me I mean, hours and hours when you added it up, all that cleaning of trying to get under the bed because they were little, you know. Um, one, another thing that I just loved is I had a junk drawer. You probably have a junk drawer, right? You're trying to pull, you're, you're opening the door and things get caught. And then you can't find anything and the junk drawer drives you crazy. But where else are you going to pull those teeny tiny little things like the paper clip and the, and the game dice and, you know, the random, um, you know, washer that you found that you're afraid is a part to something or a cord that you don't, you're afraid to throw it away because you're pretty sure, but you don't know where to put it. So I got, got a concept from this book to have a tiny's container instead of a drawer. I had like a canister and it was my tiny's. And as I sorted and purged things, I did 
purge. I did get rid of a lot. I did sort and I got things in appropriate places. But the miscellaneous stuff that was the tiny stuff drove me crazy because it didn't fit in any particular category. And it's it took too much brain power and effort on the daily basis for someone wired like me to go, oh, let me go find my paperclip container in the office and put it away. So for me, that solution was so simple to just have a tiny container. It was a canister with a lid and it sat on my counter. You can put it in a cupboard, in your counter, just somewhere easily accessible from your main, in your main probably kitchen space where it is okay and clean to just dump it in there. It keeps your drawers from being overflowing with junk and getting caught. And then if you're like, you know, I need this, um, I need a paper clip or a safety pin um, or something you remember maybe is in there. It's really pretty easy to just kind of dump it out on the counter, find your thing and put it back. I know that would drive people crazy that are really neat and tidy. Everything has its place people, but that was a solution that worked so well for someone like me that just couldn't be that meticulous about putting everything in its place and having a family that was not going to be that meticulous. So uh, another thing that was really, really key for me is setting up stations. Um, you're going to learn about this and I, I love it. You're going to learn about it in a couple of weeks. Stations um, are fabulous because you're taking tasks that require a set of tools or supplies and you're creating like a bin or a basket or a container and you're putting it in the area where it's going to be. And so instead of having one place that I keep envelopes, I had a place in my bill paying, I don't pay that many bills by mail anymore, but I did then station. I had envelopes in my, um, you know, birthday card station. I had envelope, I had, and that's just one example, but um, a lot of different tasks, tasks that are done in the home, I would, we would learn to create um, stations, cleaning, cleaning stations, um, gift wrapping stations, projects for kids stations. Instead of having things scattered all around, you, your home becomes so much more efficient in how you're functioning. And then it's so easy to just clean it up and put it away instead of having to return everything. So I just wanted to give you a little peek into a couple of things that were uh, real um, game changers in our home. So I'm going to screen share. I've got a few slides to show you now. Uh, hang on a second. I'm going to give you a peek at um, what this is going to look like. Hang on a second. There we go. So we are actually, give me one second. <laughs> I've got a block, I've got a pop-up that's blocking my screen, I can't see, there we go. We are going to be engineering cleaning convenience. That is the goal here. It is not just organizing. We are gonna engineer cleaning convenience. We are gonna engineer our homes so that the cleaning task becomes convenient and fast. How does that sound? So awesome, right? You're going to see this acronym a lot, HTCI. That's house that cleans itself, okay? So the house that cleans itself mission. I want, I just, we're going to start with like, what is the goal? What is the mission? So that it starts to make sense to you. We're going to take a house that tends to be messy and we're going to turn it into a house that tends to be clean, neat, tidy, okay? It doesn't mean we'll never have to clean, but how would you like to have a house that tends to be more clean than messy. It is a game changer. I lived it and the cleaning was so much less once I revamped my home like this. Number two, we are gonna take a cleaning routine that takes up far too much time and turn it into a cleaning routine that is shockingly fast. We're going to turn family members mess inducing behaviors into naturally tidy, yes, my pop-up is blocking this again. What does that say? And I've got a typo there. I pulled this together so quick. You guys, you have to forgive me for that. Um, I'm, I got to close this pop-up. I don't know why it keeps doing that. There we go. Naturally tidy behaviors, often without them even realizing it. Okay, we're not being manipulative here, but there's some truth to this because you're going to engineer and run their behaviors. We are going to, or you are going to get to change your life 
from one where minutes are eaten away by ordinary household chores to one with time to spare for things that really count. And that's just how I like to live my life. I don't really want to be bogged down with constant cleaning. I want my home to be lived in. I want to live, live it. I want to have adventures. I want to have flexibility. And we're going to move... Um, you're going to get to move from a person who feels like a failure in caring for your home into a person who is unburdened, unashamed, and successful in caring for your home. And I can attest to that. It it really did make me feel like a winner, which was great. So as you start this process, I want you to give yourself some grace and consider your home under construction for a period of time. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to be a disaster zone. There's actually techniques that are going to help you to go through the sorting and the organizing and the engineering process without your whole house being a disaster, I promise you. Um, it's a really great um, method. It's going to be minimal in it, the disruption. But I want you to give yourself the grace to go, my home is under construction for a period of time, and it's okay. It's okay while I'm working in a space for it to feel like undone and um, to not have it finished yet. I'm in the process and you can tell people, I'm under construction. Forgive my house right now. We're under construction. We are doing a revamp. And it is just fine. Share this with your family. Let your family know. Now, you may want to do this with your family. You may want to do it solo. There's some advice in the book for going either way. Um, but let your family know. I am embarking on a project and I am reorganizing the house. And it's going to make house cleaning a little bit more doable for us and get their buy-in on it. I'll tell you what. My husband saw my Facebook posts. I hadn't even told him I was doing this. He saw my Facebook post the other day and he comes in, he goes, you're going to, you're going to do the house that cleans itself in our, in our house. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, yes, <laughs> because he lived it. He knew how good it was and they lived it because they learned how to participate in chores in a way that made it really fast and easy for our family. So I, I have the stamp of approval. I think we've all been just like, oh, when can we get back to how we used to have, um, have things? So before we dive into what this is going to be, I want to give you some statistics from the book. Now, these aren't official statistics. This is just, she made, the author made an observation. She had a temporary job once that, I don't know what it was, but she had to walk into, um, she had to knock on the door and step into about 300 homes across several counties in her area. She said these were middle-class to upper middle-class homes. And her observation was as she walked in, these were unannounced visits, okay? Um, she said only three, only, or maybe it was even two, I think it was three out of the 300 were pristine clean. Only three. That is like what? That's, that's less, I mean, that's, that's, that's way less than 1%. 10% were somewhat livable. The main living area could have been decluttered and picked up in about 10 to 15 minutes, which that's awesome in my book. 40% were very messy. Um, the living areas um, would take several hours to clean up. And then 50% were so messy, there was nowhere that you could possibly sit down. So I just want you to take this in as you move forward, because I think um, messiness in our home is something, especially as women, that we can feel a lot of shame around, a lot of comparison that we don't measure up. And we can easily form the opinion um, or the false presumption that everyone else's house is clean all of the time, except ours or most people or my friends, their houses are clean. Mine is a wreck. What's wrong with me? And, um, you know, it's because when we go to someone's house, usually we are announced and they're going to clean up for us. And when we're looking on social media, we are seeing pictures that look nice, right? Even like here in my corner looks pretty nice, some pillows and a plant, <laughs> you know, well, this is a nice corner, but there's places if I took my computer to not so nice, pretty cluttery, right? So I just want you to remove the shame remove the shame, remove the um, con self-condemnation, um, go into this not feeling like you're going to be judged. And now look at that. Like the really, the worst category of all, 50% of people are in the worst of the worst category, according to her observations. So you are not alone. And I think the fact that I put a Facebook post up and over a hundred people were like, I want, I want to do this. It's because we're all just dying for a lifeline in this area. And so you are in a community of people that get it. And some 
some of you are going to be a little on the neater and tidier side, and some of you are going to be on the messier side. Our circumstances are different. How we're wired is different. It's okay. We all have our strengths and talent. So don't feel like you don't measure up if someone you're hearing them talk about their home and you're like, that's your only problem. You should see my problem. Okay. We're not going to be in the comparison game. We're going to ditch the shame and we're just going to all go for making life a little easier for ourselves. So the whole five weeks and the whole book is kind of going to take us through three phases. The first one's pretty quick and it's mostly just reading and that's learning that house that cleans itself concept. And you're going to have to read a couple of short chapters to really get it, to get how this was developed, why it's different, why it works um, for people who do not have the natural gift of having a tidy house all of the time. And then we're going to get into the second category, which is the bigger one, and that's engineering the home, engineering the home. And this can be a long process. Um, now you can come into this and go, I'm just going to do my bedroom and my closet, or I'm just going to do my kitchen, or I'm just going to do my pantry or my garage. You like, you can do whatever you want. You can do as little or as much as you want, or you can decide I'm going to do my whole house and I'm going to take it in phases. When I did it, I did my whole house, but it, it took me several months to get through the whole house. But I'll tell you, um, just we break the house into zones. And every time you get a zone done, it's like, you won the lottery. You just, life gets that much better and better. So it it compounds and it motivates you to do the next phase and the next phase. And it was very worth the effort doing it. Now I did not have to do, didn't devote like long days. Um, this, you can work on this in, in bursts. It, you know, you're going to put some time into it, but you can work it around your life and figure out when you can do it. And then you can stop and pause and go do life and come back. And the way that you do, there's some sorting containers. You just put them in a certain the zone you're in. You're just working in that zone and they get pushed to a corner and you cover it with a blanket or a sheet. And that is just like your construction pile and everything you're working on is under that. So that's what I mean where it's not going to feel like your house is a train wreck while you're doing this. There's a way you do the sorting like that. And then you move that pile of containers and the sheet to the next zone and you put the sheet over it and you can even put a sign on it that says, don't touch this. <laughs> and then you go back and you engineer the room and you do your solutions and you get it set up and you get that room done. And then you move to the next zone and you take the sheet off and you work. But that sheet, it's amazing how it's such a simple thing, allows, it just allowed me to like tuck it away. I mean, yes, you have this thing in, in a room for a while, but it allowed me to like not feel like we're living on top of a pile of sorting that made it impossible to go through that. I could just do this in chunks at a time and make steady progress until I would have this zone done and this zone done and this zone done. And then the house was just so much more enjoyable to live in. So that's the engineering the home process. And then the final piece to this is the easier cleaning methods. And that's, we're not going to get to that tw till towards the end. It's the last um, bit of the book, but once you have things engineered, then you get to learn all of these really clever cleaning hacks to how, how do you speed clean? How do you involve your family? There's different options you can choose that work for you and um, you decide what works for you and just how to speed it up and make it just something that is not burdensome. And when your house is engineered in this way, you're just doing quick maintenance. You're not having to go, well, we've got company coming, so I need to think about cleaning for the next 48 hours and it's going to consume me and exhaust me. Um, it's just much better. So let's talk about what support you have by being part of this challenge. Um, you are probably in the Facebook group already. I just on a whim started the Facebook group so we would have a place to interact. It's called The Peaceful Home and uh, hopefully you're in there and you can invite others. I don't care if people join midway through. It's really not going to matter. You could just start with the week one stuff and just start at any point and make your way through on your own time. We're not closing the group at the end of this. You can stay and linger after the five weeks because I know I'm going to still be working and I would love to keep talking about progress with you. And, you know, I have, I'm, I'm an idea person. I have more ideas about things I would like to do in my house that I thought, well, I can always invite others to um, participate with whatever they want to. I just, it's, from, I'm an extrovert. Okay. So 
just doing domestic things at home alone can bore me to death. So thank you for being my domestic friends because it just makes it more enjoyable when I'm doing a project with other people. So then this is the book. All right. I highly recommend that you get the book. You do not have to. You will not learn all of what, you're not going to learn all of it if you don't have the book. We will be talking about it. And so you'll pick up concepts that will still be helpful if you can't get the book, but it's really affordable. So if you can order it, you go on Amazon in the Facebook group, there is an Amazon link. This is the newest edition. And it's, I think, about 10 bucks. There are older editions as low as $6.99, I think. It is on Audible. Um, I did just realize there are some changes from the old book to the new book. Um, and I, I did it based on the old book to start with. There's some benefits, but I kind of like the way the old book was laid out better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through in the order that makes sense to me because I've done it before. So I'm going to take you through. It's not, we're not going to go in every, in order. I hope that doesn't drive you crazy. We're, most of it's going to be in order, but there are some things she moved from the beginning of the process to just putting it in the back of the book that I think are critical to understand at the beginning. So we're going to be pulling, there's a couple of places where we're pulling a chapter from behind starting in week one. And I'll explain that. Um, I really studied based on how I did this. I'm like, it's going to confuse people if we don't do it in the order that I remember doing it. So I will be giving you the week challenge assignments and the order. And of course, you know, you do however, you do however you want to do. If you want to read the, through the whole book and then do it in the order that you want to do it, be, you know, be my guest. You do it however you want. But just so you know, uh, heads up, I'm going to suggest a slightly tweaked order that I think is a little bit closer to the original edition of the book, but there's some really good new things in this one too. Now, this is an old book. Like I said, I did this in 2010. It was the older version of the book, but you're, you're going to see her referencing like, um, you know, technology wise, it's just, you can tell it's from the 2010s. So you'll just have to adjust in your brain. And then you see like, there's something on the right called evidence um, report. Uh, so she has one in the back of the book, but you know, you would have to write in the book or make photocopies. You're going to need more than one page. So I just went ahead and designed one for you. That's a PDF and you can print multiple pages out. Uh, there is, and I'll, you'll find out what that is in a bit. Um, so there's going to be some tools that I just create PDFs for you because that's what I'm doing for me and it's going to work. So you're going to get some additional tools to make it easier for you. You are going to get every week. We're not going to do Zooms every week. This is just the one Zoom, um, but I am going to get on live video throughout in the group so that I can show you some things, give you some tips, talk to you about what we're doing this week. And that way it's just there and you can just watch it on your own time when when you're able to, and I'm also going to um, put this out. So this would this is going to be posted for week one. By the way, week one starts August first. But if you want to get the book ordered and get a jump on it, you be all be my guest. You you just run, <laughs> run girl, run. Just do do it if you're motivated to take advantage of that energy. So every week I'm going to give you. I'm going to have two graphics. One is going to say the reading plan and the action steps. So for week one, these are the chapters you're going to read. One, two, three, four, and 20. I know, doesn't that, it just rubs you wrong. It's so weird to go read chapter 20, but chapter 20 is called the convert system. And so um, she put it in the back of the book for some reason. And this is like, the, this is the process that you go through. I don't understand how you can read the whole book. You wouldn't be able to get started on anything until you learn this at the back. So I moved it back to the front. It's going to make more sense for you that way. So you're just going to read chapter one, two, three, and they're short chapters, really short. Chapters one, two, three, four, and then you're going to skip to chapter 20. And then if you want to read ahead, go for it. But that's what we're going to focus on for week one. And then your actions are going to be, um, you're going to start with dividing your house out into zones. So get a notebook, a piece of paper, and you're just going to take a walk, a tour through your house, and you're going to decide what a zone is. Usually that's going to be a room, living room, entryway, kitchen, family room, master bedroom, guest bathroom. 
that's those are going to be zones. But you also may want to put hallway in a zone, unless it's a totally empty hallway. But if there's like closets or anything, that would be a zone, or a, or a closet. You could be like linen closet. That's a zone. Um, uh, you may want to like some people. The entryway is part of their living room, so it doesn't need to be a separate zone. For some people, the entryway is its own zone. You may want to do your garage as a zone. Um, you can do your car as a zone if you feel like your car needs some some um, re-engineering. Um, you may want to do, um, I'm trying to think what else. That's probably covering it. If you have any odd, you know, um, spaces, you can just divide it out into what makes sense to you as a zone. So just make a list of zones. And then I want you to prioritize you, at least the first few, like which zone is driving you crazy the most. Put that as number one. Order it in the order of priority for you as far as which rooms you want to engineer first. Um, I'm going to suggest that you don't pick kitchen as your first one unless you really, really, really want to. That's a, that's a time-consuming one for most people, and it might not be the easiest one to learn the process in. You may do better with a living room or a bedroom or, or something like that, but you can do whatever you want. Once you have your zones listed, you're going to go through a process called gathering the evidence. There's a whole chapter on it, and it will teach you how to do it. You get to play detective. You are not, just so you know, for week one, you're going to do more reading and more analyzing than you are actually organizing and cleaning. But you can get into that step if you're if you feel ready for it. So this is what gathering the evidence is going to entail. And I'm going to warn you, it can feel, it can be easy when you do this step to just feel icky. It can be easy to feel self-condemnation and feel bad about yourself. I remember that feeling. It's like, I don't really want to do this. It's like, let's say that you're in financial crisis and you're in debt and some you go to somebody for some help and they say, well, gather all your bills and your receipts and let's add it up on the table and take a look at what we have here. That doesn't feel great, right? That doesn't feel great, but it must be done. We're going to do the same with our house. We have to look at the evidence. Have you ever noticed that there's something that's a mess, like you've got your clutter pile on the one kitchen counter, you start to not see it after a while, your brain starts to just block it out, and then you just kind of learn to live with it. Well, we all do that. And so we, when someone else walks in the room, they see things that we have gotten used to not seeing. So we have got to look at our spaces from a different vantage point to actually see what's going on. And so what Mindy assigns you to do is get a step stool or a chair or a little ladder or something. And you go from zone to zone. And she's gonna talk about getting a digital camera. Again, it's dated. Just grab your smartphone and a stool. And you're, you know, um, well, you can just start there. Just start, you, you're gonna get up higher, just a little bit, a few feet higher. And you're going to take photos of your room. No, do not. You're going to be tempted to straighten it up first. Don't touch it. It's very important. You don't touch anything, even if it's embarrassing stuff out. You don't touch it. You take pictures as it is. And you get a few feet up off the ground. And you take pictures looking a little bit down on your space. So you're seeing it from a different vantage point than you normally do. And you're just going to go. You're going to do that. Definitely from the doorway of every room so that you see the line of sight, but then you're going to go from a few other angles, take a few pictures, and then you're going to go to the next room zone and you're going to do that every zone of your house. I suggest just doing that all at once. And then you can just use them on your camera. I kind of like to print it out and have it on paper, but it's up to you. You're going to be led through a process of analyzing those photos because you're going to discover what the behavior is of you and your household and why is why are there socks on the floor? You know, why are the dog toys all over the place? Why is um, whatever, whatever the mess is, you're going to figure out and they're very simple, but we don't think about it when you sit and think about it you can come up with solutions that work and you can engineer your space with some creative ways once you analyze that behavior and you need the evidence to analyze the behavior. So you're gonna be doing that this week. You're going to be doing your photos and you're going to be filling out a little 
a little um, evidence record for each space and each thing that you notice that's like that corner is a mess. Why? What's happening there? Um, you'll see, it'll make sense when you get into it. And then you're going to choose some sorting containers this week. You do not have to start sorting, but you're going to choose some containers and I'll tell you what to look for in a second. You're also going to begin the convert system. So convert is an acronym. Oh, I'm going to show you that in a minute. Let me show you. So this is, I'm going to backtrack. This is the tools that you're going to need to start week one. A smartphone to take pictures of your messy, of your zones, messy or clean, just as, as they are, you're going to need either a notebook or you're going to need to print out multiple pages of the evidence record. And I will have that PDF for you in the Facebook group so you can just download and print it. Um, a notebook works great too. You're just going to make columns and those columns are going to be the location, the evidence, the reason, and the root cause and the solution. So I'm going to use the backpacks that I told you about as an example. I would be like location, entryway, evidence, backpacks on the floor, blocking the walkway, looking like a mess. The reason, because my kids come in through the front door and they dump because they're done with school and they don't want to carry them to the mudroom and hang them on a hook that takes effort. What's the solution? I'm going to give them a place to dump it without thinking and it's going to be concealed. And so it's going to solve their problem and my problem. And they're not going to have to think about how to be tidier. They're just going to dump it um, right there inside the door and they can go in and have their snack and I don't have to nag them about changing their behavior and I have a clean entryway, right? So this is what you're going to do for every, so it's going to take a while because you're going to do a lot. But what I want you to do is get your pictures done of all your zones this week and then start doing your evidence record of whatever zone you're going to start with. Okay, because now you've got the pictures, you can go back and fill out the evidence record later when you get to that zone. So notebook or print, and then you need some, a stool or a chair. Really easy. All of the stuff is stuff you should be able to have at home. You are also going to start gathering sorting containers. You will not be doing sorting until either the end of week one or starting into week two, depending how long it takes you to do your evidence. Um, your evidence gathering. So here's what you are going to need though. And so I'm telling you this now so you can start looking for containers and this doesn't bog you down too much. Large card cardboard boxes. I'm talking the larger, the better. Tiny ones are gonna frustrate you. you. If you can find big ones, they're great. Or big tubs or big laundry baskets. You need, let me look at my notes, how many you need. And you could get a combination of these. Um, I wrote down which ones because she's she has it a little bit differently in there um, because she talks about yard sales. And I thought, you know, most people aren't doing yard sales anymore. They're doing like marketplace. So um, I put it. The containers. Well, maybe. Oh, I see. Hang on. It was down lower in my in my notes. So you're going to want one for trash. You're going to want one for selling things that you want to sell. If you're someone who wants to sell, or maybe you're someone who just wants to donate, you're going to want one for donating. Um, and even if you're donating to multiple places, just start with one. You can get that sorted out later. And then you need one for things that belong in other rooms. So like probably four, probably four big boxes. You are going to remove the lid if you're using tubs. You don't necessarily need that lid because you can pile it up a little bit in there and you don't want to be fighting with the lid. It slows you down. And cardboard boxes, I don't know that she says it in the new version of the book, but in the old one, I remember her saying this, and this, this was such a simple thing, but it really made the process easier. You're going to cut the flaps off. Cut those flaps off so you don't, it's a, it's amazing how much energy those little things take out of us where we're just fighting with flaps. I also do not like to work with garbage bags because you can for your trash if you really need to, if you don't have enough containers or if you want it in a garbage bag that you can haul out. But if you can, if you have a container, put the garbage bag in it because to just have it open and not have to be like fumbling with the plastic to get it open to put things in, it does make a difference. It sounds so small, but it makes a difference on how quick your sorting goes.
Okay, you're going to label these containers accordingly. I'll put a list in the Facebook group so you know how to label them. And these you're going to use in every single zone. And then you need to find a, a great big sheet or a lightweight blanket that is, I mean, it can be whatever. I guess it could be, it doesn't have to be lightweight, that can fit over all four containers and drape over. And then you're going to be prepped for going into the convert system. So this is gathering the evidence. You just need your phone and you either need a notebook and you need to print that out. And then the convert system, you're going to read about it this week. You're not going to start doing all of them, but you're going to read about it. And you're going to start, as soon as you do your gather the evidence, you're going to start with the C and the O in only one zone. You're going to pick your top priority zone. And you're going to start doing the C and the O. And if you have time and energy, you can start to work on N, but there's more you're going to learn next week. So you can really dive into N. So what are they? C is clear out the clutter. O is open up and clean. N is neat and tidy. Excuse me. Neat and organized and solve problem spots. V, verify rabbit. Okay. I'm not even going to go through the rest because it won't make any sense to you until you read the chapters. So you're gonna, after you gather your evidence, you're going to, and after you gather your containers and your sheet, you're gonna start with clearing out the clutter and you're gonna follow the guide in the book. And you're going to, when you have finished C, nothing will be in the room that isn't staying in the room. If it gets donated, thrown away, given away, sold, or it belongs in another room, it will be in one of those containers and you're going to move it to the next zone and put the sheet over it. And then you're going to be able to go into, say it's zone one, and you're going to get to do O, which is open up and clean. And that's cleaning surfaces because we do have to do some cleaning, but it's going to feel really good because you do like have the stuff out and then you just like wipe everything down and actually do the quick deep clean. It'll be quick because you've gotten rid of a lot of stuff. And after that, you start to make solutions and decide how things are going to be organized. And this is fun for me because get, I get creative. And there's lots of tips in here because you're going to make those solutions around the behavior of your people. All right. So you're only going to do C and O and N is optional. You can start thinking about solutions on the paper because I'm going to go back to the evidence. See, there's a solution column. Don't feel like you have to fill that one in right away. You can just list the evidence and the behavior, and then you can start to do the clearing out the clutter. And then you can think about the solution, write it in, and then start implementing some. But by week two is when you're going to really start reading the chapters about creating solutions. So you'll have tools at that point. Okay, so if you get to the point where you're starting to clear out clutter in week one, I want to tell you ahead of time, if that is a mental struggle for you, and it is for some people and it isn't for others, some people are like, yep, let's just that get rid of things. And others are like, I am, I don't know what to throw away. I'm struggling to get, I think I need to keep this and I need to keep this. So what I love about the system is it's not forcing you to just go minimalistic and get rid of things. So if you read the little excerpt I posted, she's like, I hate when organizers are like, well, if you haven't used it in six months, then it goes. And she's like, no, I've had this since I was nine. It's so sentimental. I'm not throwing that away now or no, I, that is going to be perfect for a Halloween costume someday for my kid. But like, I don't need it now and I don't know when I'm going to need it, but I don't want to throw it away. You get to decide that. You can keep those things. But she does have a method she calls doing the math where you are going to evaluate the price that you're paying to keep something because every item in your house costs you time. It does, I promise. It costs you time. And you'll learn that in the book. I also believe it costs you energy, um, mental energy. Uh, so think about that. And so she's like, you can choose to keep it, but you just have to run the math. And she'll teach you how to kind of run the math. Like, is it worth the price of time and energy I'm going to pay to deal with this thing in my home? Um, and if you want to, you get to keep it. And then you get to learn how to conceal it and give the appearance of neat and tidiness in your home. So I just want you to know, if you run into emotional difficulty or mental difficulty with the sorting and the getting rid of stuff process, there's help. Um, the how to do the math on making those decisions is in chapter eight, and that's not assigned till week two. But if you run into that obstacle, jump ahead and read that one.
Okay, jump ahead and read that one. There are some who have bigger problems with that. It might get into like hoarding mentality, like things that are maybe a little bit psychological or um, if there's just mindset things you're getting hung up on, there's a great chapter in the back to deal with some of that because sometimes there's even like health issues or mental health issues or depression, things that can really play into feeling totally immobilized. And there's some great tips in here if you're like, I think I'm having a bigger struggle than just not knowing how to do this. Okay, so we're about at the end. I'm just gonna end with this quote that I saw. For every minute spent organizing, an hour is earned. That is something Ben Franklin said. So think about that. For every minute spent organizing, an hour is earned. So the dividends are so much bigger than what the price is that you're gonna pay to put the effort in. It's really, really worth it. And I'm, I'm, I'm coaching myself. I'm giving myself the same pep talk because it's easy to never get around to doing this, but it will pay off. And I want you to remember that we're not just organizing, we're engineering. And so for every minute you spent engineering, it's not just an hour earned. I believe it's even more than that, which is just exciting to me. It's very, very freeing. Um, you know, one uh, of my friends that went through this with me back over a decade ago, um, I saw her posting on social media years ago, they moved to a different state as well. And uh, she posted something about her husband said, gosh, I really miss our house that cleans itself. And I'm like, yeah, I'm feeling that now too. And I've lived it and I loved it. And it was um, so worth the effort of a few months of deep diving. And if you don't want to give a few months, but you want to get a few spaces tackled across one month, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. So I'm just glad that you're doing this with me. I'm going to end the screen share. And um, if anybody has a question, you're welcome to hop on. I have a feeling we probably won't do questions here, but I'll be answering them in the Facebook group. But I just want to make sure because I said I would make time. If anybody has a question, something is feeling really like, eh, I don't know, I'm scared. If you're feeling scared, it's okay. I, I, I'm a little scared too, and I've done it before, but it's gonna be fine, because it's just gonna, we're only gonna count wins. We're only gonna count wins. Does anyone have a question? You are welcome to unmute yourself, and I will do my best to answer. Okay. Hey. I think we're good then. Thanks so much, everyone, for being a part of this. Get the book ordered if you're planning to get the book. Get a notebook or print the evidence things. And I will be getting week one stuff posted up right away so people can start whenever they want. And then, oh, if you would like a text message for each week, what the assignment, it's not really an assignment, but like what I'm leading you through, there is a place on there you can sign up to get those. I just, I program them in so that, um, it'll automatically come to you. If you just need a little reminder, um, you can get that and have fun with it and be posting in the group because I want to hear how it's going for everyone. So thanks so much, everyone. This is going to be fun.